Pick your class and learn your battle points. Because it's time for the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. Welcome to this very special episode of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. I'm joined by the two amazing composers for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Sure, hi, how's it going? I'm Gordy Hab, composer, uh, co-composer for Jedi Fallen Order. And I'm Stephen Barton. I'm the, the, also the co-composer of Je- Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, we're with, kind of with Gordy as a part, the partner in crime on this thing, so uh, it's just been, been awesome. Perfect. So in this episode, we're going deep dive right into Jedi Fallen Order and the music behind this game. So, let's get started. So, let's get started uh, with your histories. Gordy, you did the composition for Battlefront 2015, as well as Battlefront 2, Halo Wars, The Old Republic, and a few others. Uh, One of my favorites, just a little mention, is uh, one of the Indiana Jones games for the PlayStation 2 that you (laughs) did the composition for. Uh, uh <laughs> yeah, that was, um, oh my God, I'm blanking out on the name of it. It was actually my first game that I ever scored, uh, Staff of Kings. Yes. <laughs> um, and <laughs> Steven, so what, what's, what's your uh, history? I know you've done uh, Titanfall as well as Apex, um, a couple others as well. Yeah, I, um, I got started in games, uh, go with, with literally the same, pretty much the same team or, or a lot of people from the same team as, uh, as as the current respawn crowd and um uh, i started with them on call of duty modern warfare back when they were uh, part of infinity ward oh wow um and so yeah it's that's going back it's kind of kind of unbelievable that that's like that's 12 13 years ago now which is kind of crazy but there we go um but yeah so um so i've known known a lot of these guys for a long time uh and we did the the titanfalls together and then most recently uh you know the ongoing uh saga that is apex legends which yes. is uh, great fun yeah such a such a fun game a great team to work with too respawn is one of one of the best in the industry when it comes All to right. game feel. We both agree. Um, Absolutely, yeah. The, the first time I played Apex, I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I'd never felt a game that felt so good to play. Well, I think that's that's one of the things we've all that we've always focused on is is feel. Um, and you know, it's one of those things where, as as you know, I mean, I think that that's what's what's fun about Jedi is that as a game, it feel you know that they they really focused on making you feel like this this idea of like becoming a Jedi, and and it's it's got to be something that feels fluid and feels. Like the mechanics really give you something, you know, uh, you know, give you that experience, and there's nothing that's sort of kind of in the way of that. And for us as a, you know composers, I mean, I think that this this gives us a, a sort of terrific canvas because we're not necessarily trying to tell you that, you know, that the like we're not tr- I mean, the music isn't trying to tell you that this feels awesome because it does. And so yes. you know, we're kind of a lot of our job is in terms of this, that sort of you know kind of pepping things up. It's sort of done for us, so it kind of allows us to do other things in a way as well, and just sort of like. Like look for subtext and look and really focus on story so i mean that that certainly i think was one of our biggest things that we set out to do at the very beginning of this thing so yeah exactly yes yeah, the score is all about narrative uh you know but the the, the game itself like Stephen was saying really kind of has a character of its own and you know it feels really great even without the score dare i say but you know the score enhances that and you know sort of drives the story along you know add character to, to characters in the game Going going into that a little bit deeper, what was your process when um, you're going into this game, especially after working on multiplayers and then going to something that's specifically single player? What's the difference between those two things? You've got more of a dynamic uh, rise with like Battlefront 2, which you had the um, what is it, the sound engine set up for that to where it grows when the battle grows and then uh, softens down when the battle's a little bit slower. What was that process like versus uh, a multiplayer game towards a single player game? Oh, for me, I mean, it was very different, uh, you know, with, with Battlefront, like you mentioned, I mean, because it's multiplayer, you know, I'm, I'm really sort of writing music to cover every possible scenario that could take place, you know, during a match, you know, with, with this game, because it's a narrative, I mean, it was a bit more like scoring a film, honestly. So, you know, having, Themes for all the characters, all the environments, and, and and trying to weave them in and out of each other, you know, in a narrative way, and uh, you know, really just driving the emotion, which you know is very different in in many ways than something like Battlefront, which 
was more driving the action than driving the emotion. I mean, there's certainly there were emotional moments in those games as well, but, but, uh, but this one is, I would say, you know, where battlefront might be, you know, 75 to 80% action driven and then 20% emotion. This is like the complete reverse of that. I think, I mean, I just, I would echo that. And as you know, the other nice thing that because of the nature of the game and the, when it's set in the time period, it sort of, you know, it allowed us to be, to be a lot darker than I think than, 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 than many of these kinds of games would naturally be because if if you're sort of focusing on the multiplayer you're sort of a lot of the time really kind of trying to sort of you know add energy and and kind of sort of shape the flow of those kinds of matches and you know i mean i currently i mean i have that with apex as well is it's all about that's all about sort of you know kind of uh you know setting setting the arena whereas this we we were able to just focus on the story and because it's a meaty story and you know that there's there's so much we could do um which ordinarily you know, a lot of game scores you you won't necessarily get to go there, and so we have cues that are that are full on and dark, and we have a few cues that are emotional and cues that are big, and it's it really is you know as Gordy's saying, it's it's kind of you know like scoring a massive movie. Yes. Um, you know, it's except it's three times three three times the amount of music, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's got that narrative drive to it, and that's terrific. I mean, you just don't often get to do that, um, and I hope we get to do it more. <laughs> yes. I hope I hope the same thing as well, um, just because it's it's such an interesting um, place in Star Wars gaming. We've got the multiplayer with Battlefront and the great job that they've been doing there, as and then we've got this specifically single player game that is Jedi Fallen Order. Um, it's such a, such a contrast, and I think they really complement each each other very greatly. So, what when you're going into this game, what was the background? So you both entrenched in game composition uh, both doing fantastic jobs what's the history right before this game got announced uh, what's the background on that you mean more as as far as how did Stephen and I land on this as, as a, yes yeah so I, I think you know let Stephen talk to this too but you know for me it's probably pretty obvious having done the Battlefront series and, and you know a lot of Star Wars games prior to that as well uh, sort of had this cachet of you know being the the Star Wars game composer certainly with EA the uh, uh, future John Williams as uh, <laughs> it is touted. If you want to say it, sure, that's great. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, so I think that there was, I guess for EA at least, you know, it was sort of a no brainer that I'd be involved because they had liked what I'd done with the Battlefront series. Uh, you know, but of course, Steven had worked with Respawn, as we've mentioned before, quite a bit. So uh, given the amount of music that we were talking about generating for this game, I mean, being, you know, well over six, you know, almost up to seven hours of music probably in the game. Uh, it just made sense for uh, us to build a team of composers that could contribute. So, uh, you know, it just made logical sense that, you know, someone that EA was comfortable working with in the Star Wars titles and then someone that Respawn was very comfortable working with, uh, having worked with uh, their past titles. It was sort of a, a perfect match, I'd say. There was, it was an interesting thing where, you know, where, when we came off the back of Titanfall 2, which uh, the audio director on, on, on Jedi, Nick Laviers, was the, the music lead on that. Um, and we've and on Titanfall 2, we very much poached Nick, um, uh, but largely just because it was turning into this sort of gargantuan thing. And we needed someone sort of dedicated to kind of handling all the music implementation. And, uh, and Nick, Nick was already on, the, on, on a very early iteration of, of, of Jedi. Um, that Stig and a very small team were working on, and so we kind of poached him off off that briefly. Um, and he uh, and there was something we developed on that that we kind of early on knew that was going to call you know make this an almost an impossible task for one person, which was this idea of uh, trying to score a game like this uh, in a way that feels linear. Um, because with Titanfall Two, we we had this campaign where we wanted to make it feel like you you it's it's, it's one single arc um and it isn't so every time you get to combat it isn't just the same you know combat music number three or something like that and this very sort of systemic approach but we wanted it to feel like there's you're perpetually driving through this story and so and um, with that we, we you know on titanfall 2 we ended up having like about four four and a half hours of music because of that 
um, because obviously, you know, every time you come to, to, to a moment, you need new music. So, uh, and Nick and I were very sort of strong advocates of this as, a, as an approach for Star Wars, but then you're looking at, at a game that's considerably longer. It's all, you know, two, three times the length. So we're sort of suddenly like, oh, well, we're going to need, we're going to need, you know, close on seven hours of music. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and so, you know, this, this starts, swiftly starts to become a, you know, almost an impossible task. I mean, it's, and even if you could do it, it's not necessarily that you even want to. Um, and so, the, and so this idea sort of coalesced and then, you know, Gordy and I, met up and we kind of chatted about it and uh we've you know we hit it off a thousand percent i think we were on the same wavelength on that that front so um yeah it's been it's been a a really terrific 18 months of just you know kind of like trying to build climb this mountain together yeah (laughs) that's awesome both personally and and musically you know our, our music aesthetic is 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 similar uh in many ways and and different in in ways uh that allow it to complement each other i think Going into that, uh, what was what was the approach so to the to the style of the music? Obviously, Star Wars, and you've got the 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 inspiration from John Williams, who's heavily influencing all of Star Wars, as well as uh, Michael Giacchino. What was the the initial thought when you're going into this for the style of this game? I think I think one of the one of the very first things we we, we looked at was sort of going back to the influences and because this was going to be a new game and with new characters and uh and a whole new sort of direction in the story i think i think we wanted to go back and say you know not so much sort of you know kind of what what would what would john williams do you know like just using sort of music from the pr- the other 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 star wars sort of uh titles but really to look back at the uh, uh, what was the sort of the catalyst for the original you know what, like where would he go with this um mm-hmm. and so it was sort of you know a slight slightly different kind of approach i guess in a sense where we're, we're sort of thinking about you know uh even looking back at the influences i mean we sort of look we you know when we talked about all all over the map in terms of you know sort of either the classical composers that influenced the first star wars um or or, or things subsequently and uh and, th- and then really took it from there and so you know and the other big thing was that it's just it's an incredibly thematic score and that was the thing that we both wanted at the outset where we were like let's you know we're not gonna this is going we're gonna have 14 15 15, 16 new themes and they're going we're going to really work on those for you know best part of i mean we spent the best part of a year sort of really honing those down um and so there's you know they're and they're fully fleshed out they're not even just sort of little 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 ideas i mean these are fully fleshed out themes that we've able been able to run with so you know a heavily heavily light motivic score um yeah exactly and i mean you know something like you take something like battlefront for example um which is a game that's based on on you know, events that have happened in the film is based on things that you recognize and that you've, you've witnessed as, as a, as a film goer, mm-hmm. you know, so in, in a way that score needed to, needed to, to live in the world of what John Williams had created. Uh, that's how we were able to pull off, you know, setting up those environments and, and, you know, the scenarios so that it feels like you're part of the film. But with this game, I mean, it's a brand new story. It has brand new characters that aren't, you know, part of the film franchise and you know but now are part of canon and so it gave us an opportunity to sort of stretch out a bit and i, I wouldn't say get away from the john williams sound but you know actually push push the lines of what john williams was able to do with the with the films and like stephen said go back to the actual source material that john williams was inspired by and then you know sort of use that as our inspiration rather than try to do a you know the we wanted to avoid doing anything that came close to being a sort of a John Williams sound alike. We wanted to do an original score that occasionally harkened back to some of the John Williams techniques just to remind you that you're part of the Star Wars universe here. But but otherwise, it's, it's pretty original and unique score, I think, in the, in the Star Wars canon. That's such an awesome opportunity, too, to create something in this massive universe and to have this canon story um, added to that that said universe like that is such an awesome opportunity that you guys have and what was the what was the realization of that uh, was there a moment where you're just like oh my gosh like we're doing this <laughs> uh, yeah definitely I mean you know I'm, I'm no stranger to having worked on this franchise but you know it, it never gets easy you know understanding the the weight of, of a large fan base and you know the expectations. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, 
it, it's intimidating and it's overwhelming in, in many ways, but uh, but it's also kind of motivating to have that kind of you know those expectations because it, it drives me to want to please you know myself as a fan. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm a huge Star Wars fan myself, so you know, what would I want to hear? And so that's that's my driving force. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would, I would totally echo that. I mean, I said in the sense of, you know, they they give you the keys to this car, and say, here you go, you know, like you know, <laughs> take 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 this take this Ferrari out for a spin, and you know, it's, you know, you, you do have that sense of you don't want to crash it, uh, but then also you want to you want to see how how fast you can take it and how, yeah. how where you can go with it. So, so you know, I mean, there's there's this sort of awesome sense of responsibility with it, but um, but then also there's the phenomenal power. That, that sort of comes with that and i think you know when once once we got to you know abbey road with uh, and we you know we did we did a huge amount of recording with you know in a in a first it's like this is you know it's like something close on two weeks of of orchestral recording yeah. um it's and it's and it's you know literally seven hours of music and there's none of it where it's you know kind of just sort of like little little ambient things i mean it's 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 constantly at the at the sort of the pace and the and you know what we would hope of the sort of the, the density of the the, the writing where um, uh, and it's just it's a terrific thing when you you can sort of start to see that come together and start to realize that oh we actually have a game that really feels it, it gets you back to that feeling of like the original story um that's that i mean that was for me was the moment where i was sort of like oh i think we think we really have something here i mean i think this is this is this is working and it g- gives you those fe- those feelings mm-hmm. um I mean, we're talking about, you know, seven hours of music. I mean, th- there's not one note of it that is uh, what I guess you just throw away cue. I mean, every bit of it is is equally important to the story. So, you know, there's a lot of weight put on every musical moment. Yeah, there's no, there's no unloved children in this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, you and yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true of a lot of games. There are, there, you know, you do because of the amount of time that you're often afforded. Like, you have to do certain bits quickly, or there's certain bits that, that don't get recorded and stay in samples. Or, you know, right. I mean, that and that that's fine, and that's how. But like, I mean, I think what was great was that uh, EA and Respawn. Are, you know, Respawn have always been huge supporters of music, and EA likewise. Steve Schnur and, and Nick Levy has, you know, really fought for this one, um, yeah. and it just gave us the opportunity to say okay well we're going to treat every moment as important and you know there's not going to be any unloved children in this one yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly right that's so awesome what what uh what's the time frame that you guys were involved in the the game so we've got the development that's always taking place so that's that's the gameplay is the first and then what level do you guys come in to start adding yeah so i mean it was probably i'd say about 18 months Go. Does that sound about right, Stephen? That we both. Yeah, all- I mean, we we were chatting. We were sort of talking about it a little bit beforehand, but I think it was sort of. We, I mean, we kind of. I think we started talking in about March of last year. Yeah. So March of 2018. So that that's where 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 we were, you know. But even even then, prior to that, I think there were you know conversations on ongoing. And we didn't. We were very much looking to 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 to, to not like. I mean, not leave it to a scramble at the end of like you know three weeks of crazy writing. Of like, <laughs> yeah. but, but um, but that's just because it was a mountain. I mean, we knew it was a mountain to climb, so because um, it's just it's such a long game. So, but that also gave us the ability to, since we kind of came on early, to you know develop themes and even you know a lot of those themes went through quite a bit of iteration before we settled on certain themes for certain characters, and it gave us the time to sort of get those perfect and then pass them back and forth between each other and you know contribute our own ideas and, and takes on it. So that when we actually started the, the heavy lifting, the, the real scoring, we sort of had this Bible of themes already in place that we could pull from mm-hmm. and, you know, sort of develop. Uh, so, you know, coming on early sort of helped us build that in advance so that when we were really jumping in, uh, we sort of already had our, our palette in place. Yeah, getting, getting that set up beforehand. Um, you mentioned this earlier but uh, about the, the linear um, game of Titanfall. Uh, what's what's this game like in terms of linearity and especially in terms of the music? Like, how does that work? Uh, I know it's a lot. It's a lot of inspired by Metroidvania and that those types of games where you can go to these different areas at different parts. Um, right. Yeah. It's 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 amazing. I mean, actually, and this was something that surprised me as 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 it sort of came together was sort of understanding um, how retraversal and how you would have sections where you could come back over and it would be important to, you know, to, 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 to retraverse 
um, it slightly sort of changes your approach to, to composition because you, you're sort of thinking about we, we think about our main storyline and there's definitely the pathway pathway of your main storyline. But then in a lot of points in the game, there's nothing to stop you just hopping back in the ship and going somewhere else and, you know, and going to explore. And, you know, there's there's some terrific features, particularly in the hollow map where it, it, it will it illuminate an area where, oh, you haven't explored here. And that might be just because you haven't gone there or it's because you don't have a particular force power that you would need to get there. Okay. so um it's it's this it's this sort of you know musically for us that means that we have to sort of have we have to have our main storyline where we're sort of being part of the narrative but then we also have to work with 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 retraversal sections and, and we were very lucky actually to have uh, um uh, a chap called Corey mcmaster who joined the the respawn team uh actually fairly towards the end of the process in the last six yeah. months who really took it on himself to sort of uh kind of figure out how to make retraversal work um and we we knew we had the content to do it but it was one of those things where it's not a trivial uh thing to do within the game engine because you're you're effectively having to set up rules where if you walk you know the first time you go through somewhere it'll play one piece of music but if you go back to it it might play a different piece of music depending on what you've done so okay. um, and so it was a kind of a back and forward with both with both of us and with Corey and with nick of just sort of trying to figure out what we needed um, and what was sort of covered and, and what players might eventually do. Um, and that's, and that's, you know, it's a, it's a challenge to, to sort of think about because you're trying to sort of make, make this feeling of linearity in a very, very non-linear game. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, uh, and I, and I think it's also that thing of, with the story of trying to help the player feel like they're on the right path sometimes. I mean, it's like where music can be the, the one thing that tells you, Hey, you're going the right way. Um, and this is the way you should be going versus 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 not. So uh, it's yeah, unique challenge really. Yeah, it really was. Because that that was my my one of the things I was interested in um, going into the game was this idea of a non-linear. Because most of the the early previews have been like, so I went into this game and I thought it was just going to be you go to this, you go to this, you go to this. But it opens up much more, and I was very interested in um, your process on that. How was your process on the creation of the sounds of the planets and the the journey that Cal takes through them? Yeah, that's a good question. So we, we made sort of a conscious effort and decision from the beginning to give each planet sort of its own unique sound. Um, you know, so so each each planet does have like it, it, a very strong character in and of itself. I mean, even as far as to, and Stephen can talk a bit more about this as well, uh, from a production standpoint, we even chose for some planets to have a bit more of an intimate sound uh, where, you know, some of the larger planets, a bigger sound, we recorded everything in, in Abbey Road Studio One, but for the intimate stuff, we recorded in Studio Two, which has a smaller, tighter sound. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So these were conscious, even with a smaller orchestra, um, not for any budget reasons, but actually for an aesthetic reason. Uh, to give different character to certain environments in the game. Uh, and that's just one example of many. I mean, you know, there's a planet where, you know, for the most part, we featured all of the lowest instruments in the orchestra, you know, like you had, all the, the wind section was, you know, all contrabass clarinets and bass clarinets and contrabassoon and so on. You know, we even used uh, for the flutes instead of just having like your typical flute section, we, we had alto flute, bass flute, and then a contrabass flute, which is like this, you know, eight foot tall thing they have to play standing up, you know, and again, oh, wow. character to that planet. And, and each, each environment sort of has its own, you know, sort of aesthetic that we designed uh, in advance of really writing for it so that we, so each planet has a, you know, it's unique in a sense. I mean, definitely. I mean, we we one of the things that we well, two two of the things. One of the one of them in particular was this this idea of being able to play with space and yeah. uh, in terms of, not literally space in terms of space space, but but like uh, just the, the the sense of sense of scale. Mm -hmm. um, and there's and there's times where where you know on the journey where Cal's very much sort of kind of it's him and him and BD one and he's exploring. And there was this sort of feeling where you sometimes wanted to tell the story from a very sort of personal standpoint. And then there's 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 times where you want it to open out into this sort of enormous vista and uh, um, uh, we started playing quite early on with you know if, if someone has a surround system to, to listen to the soundtrack you'll, you'll find that it wraps around you in a way that you probably never heard it's like quite like quite before um, because it, we're recording 
recording using a lot of techniques that we were developing the for for things like Dolby Atmos and for immersive uh, surround. Okay. Uh, where you really have this feeling of it sort of instead of all being in front of you, where it wraps fully around you. Um, and it's not necessarily that you'd say, oh, I've got like violins to the left of me or I've got like cellos to the right of me. And um, uh, if, if, if it's if it's done well and we, you know, I think we think, think, think hopefully it's been successful is it's more this just this sense of I'm within this experience. I'm, I'm very much inside it as opposed to as opposed to it being something I'm watching. Yeah. Um, and, and with that use of space, we were then able to find that if you if you recorded certain pieces of music in smaller sense of space, it gave it gives you this just this different feeling. Um, and a different emotional response because it, it feels much closer to you. And then when you when it then opens out into 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 the full size of Studio One, it's not like you suddenly go, oh, the music sounds like it's in a different space. But you just get the sense of just it opens out, and mm-hmm. uh, and that's a, an immensely powerful thing um, and very subtle and not something you necessarily would go, oh, I noticed this. But it's just that sort of feeling that you get from it. And so things like that, I think, you know, where, you know, we actually had the, the time to explore that where, you know, a lot of times if you're on a feature film or on the end of a game, you just don't, you know, it's like more about like, oh, let's just get it done. Let's get it finished and get it in the game. But yeah, you know, here we actually had the time to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. I'd say there's, there's plenty of projects I've worked on where we had these grand ideas in the beginning. And then, you know, when when you really get into it and <laughs> you're down to the wire, you know, a lot of those things. Have time. Yeah, exactly. But but with this with this game, none of that happened. I mean, every single idea we sort of had in the beginning, you know, because we were very sort of crafty about planning out how we were going to make this all happen. Uh, all of our ideas, initial ideas, you know, made it into the production in some way. So, I mean, right down to the, what we were talking about, like using different spaces to create different uh, feelings or moods rather than, you know, uh, trying to do that with you know, say orchestration or something like that. I mean, we sort of did both, you know, we certainly would approach orchestrating a cue that was written for the smaller uh, studio would be approached slightly differently. But uh, in all, we were kind of using these devices to create these feelings and these moods. Yeah. So last question here. Um, I really want to get nerdy with you guys, but (laughs) just because I'm a huge audio nerd and I love the, the different techniques for that. But what, what, are you most excited to see people experience when the game comes out? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think for me, I think it's to, it goes back to story. You know, what's great about the original Star Wars and the original movie was that that it, it's it's all in the story. Everything is about these characters, and you really care about them uh, at the end of the day, and that's why it works. Um, and you know, we, I think I think it's that sort of you know. I mean, I've always likened Respawn a little bit to Pixar. Um, they are sort of the Pixar of games, where they they kind of they have this 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 sort of laser like focus on on doing 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 things that give you that feeling and you know uh, we had it on titanfall 2 where we really wanted you to care about bt it wasn't you know he was this with this 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 titan we wanted you to you know at the end of it to to have 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 a sort of emotional bond with him um and and here we have the same the, the same thing it's like it's it's going for feels and going for going for that feeling of uh we we really you know bring you back to what that that first experience of watching the first movie was like and not just sort of merely just sort of oh here's some wallpaper in the star wars, star wars sort of style but here's something that actually gives you the the, the feels mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I completely mirror that it's you know i really want the, the end user the player to to feel every possible emotion that they could feel i mean it's a it's a very you know uh, personal story it's very human story so i mean we, we we hit on every possible emotion you can imagine in the score uh so i'm hoping that the player feels all of those emotions you know the way we sort of uh intended them to be felt um but then also from sort of a technical standpoint uh i'd love for the the takeaway to be wow they really actually took production of the score to the next level mm-hmm. uh you know, from from how it's written to the orchestration to where, how we've stretched it out musically and sort of broken through some barriers uh, in the Star Wars universe. But then also from a technical standpoint of how we produce the score, recording it so that it could be, you know, we're recording it in, you know, a, a surround immersive environment, you know, using 7.1, for example. Um, and even, you know, from the, the technical way we set up microphones in the room, you know, to, you know, sort of create that image, um, you know, 
takes it to the next level, I think. And so I hope it's a little of both, you know, feeling emotionally what the score is trying to tell you, but then also to say, oh, wow, they really took this thing to the next level. It's like Star Wars 2.0. Yes. And bringing that the idea that this is an, a, a produced thing in a video game. I can't yeah. wait. I'm going to be playing this game in headphones just so I can appreciate <laughs> that fully. Man, good. That's great. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast. I had an absolute blast as always. Um, audio is one of my favorite things to talk about. I could nerd about that for hours upon hours. <laughs> awesome. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having us on. It's great. Uh, anything you guys want to promote uh, while you're here, uh, which, what you're excited about, um, your Twitters, that kind of thing? I'm sure yeah, anyone I, that wants to, to follow along with what you know I or Stephen are, are doing, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, and it's just at Gordy Hab, G-O-R-D-Y-H-A-A-B. And I'm also on Facebook, same thing, Gordy Hab. And um, I'm at, uh, I forgot what my Twitter handle is. Oh, yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> at, Composer, at Composer Barton, I think it is, uh, for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why it is that, but anyway. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, and, uh, you know, and obviously we're, we're, we're out on the, the 15th of, of November with, with the game. And, uh, um, yeah, we're just ho- hoping it's, uh, hoping people like it. Perfect. Yes, and uh, as always, thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at SWB Podcast. Uh, definitely give these guys a follow. It is definitely worth your time to see what they put out. Um, always have a blast following you guys on Twitter and seeing what you guys tweet about. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>